Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I have the beautiful Patricia Mona on my channel again. And by the way, guys, a lot of people do know Patricia. If you don't, I did an interview with Patricia about her work. We talked about psychic abilities, mediumship, remote viewing. So I will post that interview I did on Patricia on my description box when I actually upload this video. So guys, I wanna give you my biggest, you know, I love Patricia. She knows that she is amazing. She's very talented. She has been featured in Guy TV. Um, we're gonna see a lot more of Patricia and as, as well as her being on YouTube. She has her own YouTube channel. So I'm just gonna give it away to Patricia to do a quick intro for our audience and our subscribers and new viewers and subscribers, welcome. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, yes, I'm a professional psychic medium. I live in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And I do a lot of work with law enforcement, both locally and internationally, um, in locating missing persons. And to date, I've found 29 missing persons. Uh, so it works. It, using a combination of remote viewing and psychic abilities is slap it all together. And you can literally, the movie unfolds right in front of you like, you, like you're watching it. And then you just say what you see. And lo and behold, the results are there. So yeah, thank you for the, thank you for the opportunity. Aww. Um, just for, Patricia, I always get people who want to know, um, do you still do any, you know, psychic readings right now? Because I know you're very booked, you know, fully booked, but people yeah. want to know if you have any availability to do readings or anything like that. What are you offering right now? And I have a lot of people who are interested in your workshops. So yeah. um, can you just do that really quick for me? Yeah, for sure. Um, I do do one on one readings. Uh, right now, I was just on Gaia TV with George Norrie Beyond Belief. Um, and so that my, my schedule is actually booking into, I think, April 2022. Um, I do get cancellations. I don't have a cancellation list. I get asked that question a lot. Um, and the reason why is when cancellations happen, they show up uh, right online yeah. right away. And I truly believe that it's all in divine timing. And it's amazing who can get into me right away when spirit tells them, okay, look now, look now. So I always let the universe, um, you know, decide on, on my schedule. Uh, I do teach psychic development classes as well as meditations. Um, and uh, I actually have one tonight, a global healing meditation that I'm doing from 7 p.m. Um, Mountain Standard Time. And uh, I've been offering those on Zoom since we're still, in Canada, we're still under lockdown. We're not allowed to have classes yet. So I've been offering it on Zoom. And I think, you know, it's interesting when the universe pushes you out of your comfort zone. Because I was saying before the camera started rolling, I get so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I know people say, oh, you're natural. It's like, no, it doesn't feel that natural. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> seem it that way. You, you do know? a really great job. <laughs> but, but the coolest thing that this last year has given me is pushing me out of my comfort zone and being able to spread that healing all across the world instead of just here in Calgary in my studio. So I truly believe that, you know, we meditate together as one, we can plug into that quantum field where miracles are infinite. You know, everything is energy. So if you know how to read it, feel it, be it, there's really nothing you can't know or manifest. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of time. By the way, Patricia, I can't help noticing your crown chakra is super activated right now. I can just see it. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I'm like, um, I don't know. I can see auras, but I just can see yours. And yours is just like this fusion, like really bright color. It's so beautiful. I was just like, oh my God, she is so ready for this video for this thing we're doing. <laughs> and you know, it's interesting the whole time, whenever you've been talking, I've been watching like an eight foot angel standing by your door. In the oh my God. People door. are always, someone said, said there's yeah. like an angel. Um, a lot of people seen shadows or somebody moving through my walls a lot. And I had so many different crazy orbs from golden to oh, everywhere. Just mm -hmm everywhere but a lot of people um i really thought when i did the remote viewing on saturn i thought i invited some reptilians to my room <laughs> and i was like okay maybe it's not maybe you know but i i just kept on seeing a lot of extraterrestrials i mean every time just you know vanishing appearing teleporting in my room going through my walls really yeah. fast i had one watching me sleep like a um extraterrestrial and that it didn't scare me but i was just like what you know it was just like oh my god well <laughs> and, and you know the more 
the more you look into this stuff, your natural curiosity opens doors and opens portals, yeah. right? So mm-hmm. the more you attune with it, the more it's, they'll show you stuff, but be careful with that. Um, yeah. I, I had a friend who got himself into some hot water with that stuff, opening up stuff that he shouldn't have. And um, it can really mess with you. It totally can. And what they do is when they are out of an avatar, a body, right? What are we? We're pure consciousness. And that's what these beings are. And what they'll do is they'll literally merge into your past, your, your, your bio field in through your body and they merge consciousness with you. And they'll literally push your consciousness out of the way so that their will is done and so you got to be really careful what you're allowing in here and in here because the minute you turn on that broadcasting station it it's very easy for people who don't know about this stuff to go okay well something was telling me to do it you know look at the typical son of sam for example Mm -hmm. you know that the devil made me do it and and that's what will happen is that it'll merge with your consciousness so keeping our vibration very high pure saying our prayers staying in a state of meditation and it, just for anyone who um you know who wants to know i'm not coming from a place of religion it's yeah. a place of everything is energy and you can feel goodness you can feel that that God force energy working through you when you're in alignment with it. It's an energy and a field that can completely transform you and open you to those other higher dimensions that lets you see things from the bird's eye view instead of the person going through it, right? So I got to teach you how to be able to observe, not absorb, or not just you, all, all of the viewers. It's information that we all mm-hmm. need right now observe do not absorb do not let them into your house there is a way for you to be able to see it on the mind screen but not necessarily interact with it on that level where it's now staring at you in your bedroom or scaring the crap out of you where you can't sleep and it's what you can't turn off yeah Mm -hmm. there's got to be boundaries with these beings or they will cross them so fast yeah boundaries oh you're absolutely right about that I notice a lot of people on YouTube are now having doing a lot of connections with um, extraterrestrial contact. I see that really def- definitely growing so much within the YouTube community, people who can connect with certain um, councils or, you know, um, extraterrestrial beings. And I, that's really, I'm very curious. I mean, I had one experience, but like I said, it was only like one time and that's it. Um, so I was just like, a, you know, um, I just thought that was very interesting with a lot of people who are definitely, like I said, that field is definitely, I noticed definitely growing. Uh, Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's because we're living in the day and age of, Mm -hmm. um, of enlightenment of it coming to the surface. I think that we are all capable of this. We are like broadcasters sending and receiving Mm -hmm. signals all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, but the thing is, is that we have to have high levels of spiritual discernment. We have to have to have to we have to know what what is this serving is this for the good of humanity or is this something that that can totally bring me into a dark void because some of this stuff does and and so for me it's like i'll 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 put it this way why mess around in lower dimensions why you know we're we're here uh, to embody change, to uplift humanity, to help heal, and to help see humanity through different crises that we're going to see in our lifetimes, right? Well, if the, if some of this stuff is harming a person, and they're still moving towards it, I don't know, it's just they're opening up dimensions with their own energy, and they don't realize it. And it's the same thing with Mount Shasta, what we're going to talk about today. Yes. The reason why there's so much activity around Mount Shasta is because of the energy field that is right there. The natural vortex of energy. It's just like for anyone who lives in Montana, you totally have to go to the Montana Vortex House. You want to feel energy and and you think you're blocked? Go to the Montana Vortex House. It doesn't matter how blocked you are. It will knock you on your butt. There's no one that can't feel that energy. It's so powerful. Well, Mount Shasta has that same potent energy feel to it. So, of course, you're going to have a lot more um, UFO activity, government activity, um, energy, all of that natural, uh, you know, occurring miracles.
cycles that we don't understand happening in that energy. And I do oh, yes. because um, of where it is located. It's, it's, I believe it's one of the chakras of, of earth as well. Mount Shasta is it's on the energy. Yeah. No, I noticed that like, well, cause we're right now diving into this. This is perfect timing. No, I absolutely agree. What I saw when I remote viewed, I felt there was a lot of past civilization. Um, almost, it's almost like Atlantis, like the timing of Atlantis yeah. and earth. Um, a lot of people don't understand earth been here for a, such a long time, even before Atlantis, you know, yeah. but I felt like when I looked at it, it just reminded me, I was seeing like dinosaurs or tall creatures, giant. And I was like, oh, like I'm seeing Native American civilization. I'm seeing the giants that roam the earth. I saw mounds. I saw crystal water that was very healing. Yeah. You know, it was like you said, there was like different civilization that was even I even saw a volcano activity, like people living underneath some kind of mountain structure. And um, it, it was just a lot. Like I said, I just saw, you know, the whole Mount Shasta. I just saw it as a compass with the UFO activity, it's a huge compass as some kind of coordinates um, for coming down on earth, like something, some kind of meeting, like meeting humans and um, extraterrestrials. I don't know, it's like a meeting point, um, some kind of signal. And I saw like a lot of, what is it, starships um, coming in. Um, it, they look like spacecraft, but it, the design looks like a ship and it almost reminds me of Star Trek spacecraft. Um, how it was looking towards me, very metal. The metal was very, very um, something that is not in this world or built with our technology, super AI technology, the material. Um, but it, right, the way the shape was, was like from the movie Star Trek um, that I was seeing, the shape of it, the design of it. And I just saw a bundle of them and it's like some kind of compass where they come and go. And then I saw some kind of underground um, Felicity, where there's um, humans or military generals, um, something like going on underneath, like underground tunnel or underground, um, some kind of um, area, almost similar to Area 51 that I was yeah. seeing, but it's very top secret, confidential. And I saw a lot of boardrooms, meetings, um, military, I saw soldiers. Um, there were just a lot of conversations. I didn't see aliens walking around I did see like you know soldiers like Robocop soldiers um kind of superhuman soldiers um that I was seeing and as well as it was really bizarre <laughs> but I was seeing like you know maybe humanoids not like aliens walking around um I was just seeing like I only saw like you know you know, the, the craft, the spacecraft that I was seeing coming and going. And I just feel this place is a lot of different civilizations throughout history. And it, like I said, the water, crystal water, I feel the crystal water is very healing. There's something special about the water there. And there's something very historic about the, the mound um, structures. I, I think they're called mounds or some kind of circular, um, I guess they're called mounds, M-O-U-N-D-S. Yeah. um that was uh, that was like native american you know giants roaming the earth atlantis but it wasn't like atlantis civilization it was yeah. similar but it was a different breed and i felt a lot was like you know hidden underneath some mountain or volcano or structure it was really bizarre <laughs> it was beautiful so but i can tell like you on earth I can, on earth I can tell you why you picked up on the crystal crystalline water yeah. um so earth does have a crystal grid and um, and even if you look at the ley lines, for example, right? When ley lines intersects, it creates a vortex. So if you look at where crystals grow throughout the world, you're going to start to see clusters that naturally glow, grow on the ley lines. So I truly believe that Mount Shasta sits on a crystalline city. There is absolutely an underground bunker under there, and I do believe that the military are coming and going from it um but it's the energy yeah. that the piezoelectricity you know that the geomagnetic field all of it that runs underneath it around it and on top of it that i think it, it creates a cosmic highway for um for different um you know different ships to come in mm -hmm. and when i did look at the people that were under there, they didn't, or I guess the 
<clears throat> and I agree with you about Atlantis. It would, to me, it's either Atlantis or Lemuria. It's something where Lemuria. Um, yeah, I was saying Lemuria or Atlantis. Yeah, very similar. I can see yeah. crystals everywhere, and it looks like paradise, like waterfalls, and like you said, dinosaurs way back in the day. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason why we can read the consciousness of Mount Shasta is because um, certain crystals are memory keepers. They keep history. Look at Herkimer diamonds. They're record keepers, right? So if you know the resonance of the record keeper, you can get in there and read the story. So I think that we're actually flipping through many chapters of time that has mm -hmm. happened in and around Mount Shasta. But the people that I saw were really, really tall. And I saw blondes. They had long blonde yeah. hair. And their faces looked really pale, really, really yeah. white. Did they uh, look like humanoids, like regular people, but a little bit different? Yes, yes, yeah. like humans, but mm -hmm. gorgeous, long blonde hair, blue eyes or green eyes. I remember seeing lighter colored eyes. Um, and you know, the eyes are the window of the soul. And I mm -hmm. think that each color has a frequency. Um, and our eyes, it's, it's, we have the eyes to see. We see through, mm -hmm. um, we see through into people's souls not just looking into this 3D, we also see into the 5D, right? So there's something with their eyes that gives them the resonance to be able to see way deeper. Like this stuff would come very, very easy to them. Um, I think that they're very spiritually connected beings and they know how to work with the resonance of nature and bring in the history of nature into their bodies. I don't know. There was something very unique about their resonance as well. They did yes fairly glow like the way a human does with their auric field their glow is different yeah no I saw with the eyes but I saw like something with their foreheads like they had this intense creasing right above the eyes I don't know if you saw it was like almost like a design yeah like a design it was like it was yeah. really like right here like some symbol almost like a triangle but something it's like very it's like like this their eyes are I don't know it was very unique very intense so what do you think that means? Um, I, I think it was part of their features. Like I said, they're, I just saw them as, they're not 100% uh, humans, but I feel like there's some kind of humanoid breed. Um, like I said, their outfits, their uniforms um, was very different the way what we, we would wear. Almost like they were wearing robes or blue robes or blue. I saw the color blue a lot on their dressing. I don't know if this is like some kind of covering, like a long jacket. Um, it's just the way the dress was very different and their foreheads um, just looked very different from a regular human. They dress differently. They dress from a different time. Yeah, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that different mountains, um, I don't think that Mount Shasta is just the only place that has this. And I'll tell you why. Um, up in Banff, Canada, about an hour and a half from where I live, I know that we have our own Area 51. And so a few of my girlfriends and I, we had um, a girls weekend, and I've got a military grade laser that <laughs> it shoots far. And so we were out, um, you know, underneath the stars shooting at this mountain and something was flashing right back at us. And I wish it was clear on the video because we did video it, um, but it was literally mimicking the flashes that we were doing. So I, I, I think that mountains like that or that resonance and, you know, what goes on in and around Mount Shasta, I think that there's many places throughout the world that that's, that that's happening and we just don't know. Yeah. No, the feeling I got was it just reminded me Area 51. I can never remote view Area Area 51. I'm always being restricted um, to get in. But um, when I look at Mount Shasta, um, Shasta um, it just reminded me of Area, um, Area 51. But did it was the see, energy was. Did you see vehicles driving underneath? Because I saw big vehicles. Yeah, that's what I saw. It was like cars people like underneath. vehicle. Like I, I thought I saw golf cards or something like some kind of golf cart it looked like a golf cart by fault I saw something like that and I was like it's like people in it and they're driving it was but it was military it was high official people it yeah, goes I did. miles I think I believe that those underground bunkers go yeah. for miles and it has elevators yeah yeah mm -hmm. and I think that there's tunnels 
all underneath a lot of cities and that that's not that's not rumors about what happens under the tunnels because even um up here in calgary al capone he dug a tunnel all the way from the us up here to canada and i've been in these tunnels um a friend of mine owned a nightclub that used to be um a bank of canada and mm -hmm. he took me in to go do a clearing and everything and it had all these tunnels underneath it so we don't know what we don't know is what i'm trying yeah. to say right we don't know where these tunnels lead but i think that there's so much more underneath what's right in front of us you know and we're just completely oblivious to what's being yeah. no the, the the beings were very beautiful people i didn't feel threatened it was a really beautiful energy um but it was just so much secrecy so much military activity that it was picking up you know um but um i saw like i said i couldn't get everything i wanted to see just because it's just so sealed um but you know i just felt like there was just many civilization before you know before right now and that's just incredible you know i did see the waterfalls i did see mermaids mermaids creatures like fish people very beautiful very beautiful people and they had a lot of scriptures and stones and rocks and treasures it's it's very, very beautiful, like very, very beautiful um, that I was seeing. And then just a lot of glow, like lots of vibration and glowing of the water, um, the crystals everywhere, uh, even the rocks, the mountain. It was like such these little glowing colors. Yeah. I and it was very beautiful. Positive. Yeah. I just wanted to, what do you think, what, what is going on with everything going on over there? Do you have any, why are they here to help humanity or? Why are they meaning so much in that coordination? Because I, I saw it as a compass. Yeah. So, you know, I've been doing my own meditations, asking a lot of questions lately. And, you know, where did we come from? This whole Adam and Eve thing. What, what actually, how did we get here? And I keep seeing 12 plus one, 13 tribes, but 12 plus one. I'll explain. Um, so I truly believe that there was. 12, I don't know, different races that seeded humanity. And, um, and I think that we were given all different parts of the world, you know, and I think that these beings that came here had very, had a very high resonance, they had the wisdom of the gods. Um, and they were here to see bring humanity to this earth, populate this earth. And I think that where disease and everything else happened was when you start crossing resonances right and that's why way back when you know it interracial marriages and all of this was you know a no-no in religions back then and i think it was because they were scared of the power of the race that we would create had two people come together with you having these gifts me having these gifts what are we going to create right well this is you know thousands of years later this is where humanity is at and i believe that these 12 tribes have their own reasons for coming here um with their own gifts and um you know and traits and i believe that this is a planet of free will where each one of us gets to decide you know who do we want to be what resonance do we want to carry within us and so I think that the story of creation has been hiding in plain sight. Um, I think that the government does know a lot more about UFOs, um, you know, than they're obviously caring to admit. And I think that these beings are still around today. And I think, why are they being hidden from us? Or why do we not choose to see it? You know, and I'll tell you something. Why do we not choose to see it? So, um, I had a girlfriend who um, we were hanging out and she brought another friend with her and her friend said to me when she found out I was a psychic, she goes, I'm a shape shifter. I can shape shift. And I'm like, I actually laughed. I'm like, whatever. I, I shouldn't have said that. The chicks changed right in front of me. I nearly died. I oh my started God. Hanging my head off. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And there was four of us watching it you know and but before that i was like whatever i'll see i'll believe it when i see it 
I can't unsee what I saw, you know. And How did she look like? Was it a, like a rep- was it a? So she, so she starts to drop into meditation, and I could see her consciousness being pushed out of the way. I could literally see this thing entering her. It looked like a Snapchat filter coming down around her face, and then when she looked up. Her eyes went completely black and she was blonde hair, blue eyed. She then looked like she had almost, it wasn't, it didn't look like scales. It looked almost like a web going all across her face. Her hair all of a sudden, when it was this short, it started, it was growing all You could literally see it glowing and shimmering and it was shimmering purple. Like it was the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. And she's like, (gasps) She, you know, or sorry, I was like, oh my God, you know, when she did this and she goes, I'm actually surprised you can see it. She goes, I do this all the time. And a lot of people can't even see it. They'll just go. Oh, I was going to ask you, okay? Trisha, is that only people who spiritual people who are in the high? I don't know. Can see? I don't know because the other, the other girls saw it too. And they okay. described it all too. But so I don't know if she was, cause it happened in my studio. We are sitting under the pyramid. So it's like, okay, did that amplify your effect to be able to come in and do that? I don't know. Um, but all I know is we all saw it and she goes, yeah, a, a blocked person or a regular person will just go, oh, did you change your hair? Or are you wearing different makeup today? It'll be perceived as there's something different about you, but I can't put my finger on it. For me, I saw full blown where it looked oh, wow. like a Snapchat filter coming down over her face and completely, and her resonance changed. Normally I see people like people who pray. I can tell who prays or meditates because I can see the gold glowing in their auric field and it'll, it'll start pushing from the inside out into their field, Right. Then there's other people who, you know, if they're feeling sick or depressed or lying, lying, it literally turns this brownish red color into an auric field. Well, her auric field was a color I had never seen before. It literally looked like she'd embodied the rainbow. It was weird. It was just so weird. So if I hadn't seen it for myself, I, I'm going to be honest. I don't know what I would believe when it comes to that, because I'm, I love the tangible show me. You know, because I truly believe the only difference between a skeptic and a believer is the experience. And I'm open to the experience, but until I've had it, I'm going to sit on the fence until my truth is found within me. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and, and even me sharing this, um, you know, it's my truth. It's what I experienced. Right. So I can say, yeah, (laughs) there's definitely something out there that us as human beings really have no idea, you know, how deep this stuff goes. It could it be your brother or sister that's right in front of you being infiltrated by these things. Absolutely. And we're at, we're at at spiritual war right now. We're in the middle of a spiritual warfare, like you wouldn't believe. So there's already a fight for our souls. There's already a fight for what's going on inside of us right now. This is why we must have spiritual boundaries and create that field of light where this stuff can't touch it. I can be in this world, but I don't need to be of it. Right. Just be Mm -hmm. careful with that stuff because they got some strong energy. Yeah. With your friend, was this something she learned how to do to shape shift or is something she knew right away when she was young or was it practicing? Um, Because I know there's some, you know, I do believe aliens does walk among us. You yep. know, um, with that, I do believe that, but I was just wondering, could she be, you know, hiding something or maybe not telling everybody where she comes from exactly? I don't know that. I don't know. I don't know when I started yelling. I was like, oh my God, it was the craziest <laughs> thing I'd ever seen. And I, I remember picking her brain the whole night, like going, oh Lordy, like when did this start happening? And I'm pretty sure she said it was like, around 12 or something that she started communicating with them, but she could feel deceased loved ones. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I'm pretty sure it was a teenager when I think I, if I remember correctly, I think she said she was abducted or something or saw the inside of a spaceship. I don't know. I'd have to ask her again. Yeah. No, I had an incident like that where I told people I had this incident one night um, that um, I was laying my bed and I remember everything and then it went dark. Um, I saw like some kind of 
people around me and everything was floating. It's like time stop, gravity stop. And I was on my stomach and I was floating and there was these blue beings around me. And then somebody um, put their, their, I remember their hands and it was like three fingers and it was very scaly and they put it on my crown chakra and they were doing something to my head. And um, there were, and I just remember there was static. I was seeing static stuff like on the TV, like static. Yeah. And they were trying to communicate me with different voices or languages. Yeah. And I just remember images and static, like a TV, were like switching the channels. Yeah, and that's, that's how I was, what I was seeing, TV. but I didn't know what they were doing. I was the next day I was freaking out. I was telling my friends, oh my God, because I, re I remembered everything when I woke up, you know, and I just remember I was floating, was pitch dark. There was this blue aura around me. There was people around me and they, somebody put, this being put their hand on top of my head while I was lying on my stomach, like floating. And I didn't know what they were doing. So I was like, well, <laughs> they oh, did stomach. something. That's when my remote viewing got stronger. That's when I started to yes. really become yeah. more telepathic. So I was scanning as you're, as you're describing it. And that's exactly what they were doing. They were attuning you to that higher vibration so that mm -hmm. you be on a much bigger scale. We, like I say, we're radio station setting and receiving all day long, right? So they were literally attuning you to their channel. And that's why your remote viewing abilities went poof after that. Yeah. Right after that incident, yeah. I was like, oh my God, like, I, I, I don't know. I noticed a big difference on my head. I was like, whoa, like where did these gift or abilities it got stronger I, I don't know it was like it was just crazy of how much and I was telling my friends my second friends are like oh my god it was a reptilian you know that's not good I was like no I, I wasn't scared I just remember they were just doing something to my brain or to my mind they were just, you know it was it was the coolest experience ever wow yeah <laughs> I wasn't exactly. scared I was like this is so cool oh my god I hope I'm going to be okay but I guess well, it was the floating in the air and time yeah. stop in space. It's very different. Yeah. The feeling. You were astral traveling. And that's yeah. because they were working on you in the astral. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's what they do because when we're go, 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 left brain logic, we're too stuck in the 3D to bring our attention and our energy into the 5D, right? And it think of remote viewing. If you want to see something, how do you see it? I feel into it. I literally become it. If I am, if I'm looking for oil or a missing person, I am literally into their energy being what I'm looking for, right? Because everything has a resonance. And then you all of a sudden get the story that goes behind what it is that you're looking for. Everything's a resonance. Yeah. Uh, why is everybody, I mean, I noticed like huge around Mount um, Shaista. So, I mean, is there anything else you want to add into the remote viewing, um, Patricia? Um. Anything you want to talk about, or, I mean, like I said, I, I didn't feel threatened. I think it's a very beautiful yeah. healing place, but yeah. there is a lot of stuff that's going on. That's very like military government. So whatever that's going on, you know, absolutely. Um, and you know what, who knows, we may never know what's actually yeah. going on there or know a 10th of what's going on there. Um, but there is some really powerful energy coming in this month, in the month of June. And I'm sure a lot of people have been feeling ungrounded and scattered and emotional and, and full of anxiety and, you know, feeling heavy in the chest. Uh, it's your body. It, it's your body acclimating to the energy that's happening that we're being bombarded with right now. So yeah. we have to choose our outcome, whether we realize it or not, it's the energy that you choose to embody because everything is energy, the good, the bad, the ugly, right? Light bulbs. We can, we can use electricity to either electrocute someone or to light up and make a difference in a room, right? It's electricity. It's the intention of the user that dictates the outcome. So for people who are feeling that scattered energy right now, command it, command peace over you, meditate, Breathe in peace into every pore of your body because you're activating your highest light. This is a very high light, intense time period that we're going through. So it's going to make you feel like this all over the place if you don't know how to get that energy in line, right? We are the manifestors, uh, the creators of, of, of what we want to see through mm -hmm. this. 
So the more we can meditate and ground right now, the more quickly we will acclimate to that higher vibration that we are being asked here to embody. More, I've never seen so many people feeling activated, ready for the fight, ready for, and you know what? Not ready for the fight. I got to change that word. Uh, ready for peace, to exude the peace, right? Because what, what we resist persists before peace. Don't, don't before war, you know what I mean? So, and I think that um, more and more people are getting in into healing and, and seeking their own so that they can pass it forward and understand it for other people because that's what we're being asked to do right now. We're being asked to be the voice for the voiceless. We're, we're being asked to stand up um, and, and to be heard. So I encourage people, whatever is pressing on your heart right now, do it, speak up be the change, be the difference, you know, don't sit back and, and tolerate what you can't stand tolerating because you're literally teaching people how to treat you. You are. So demand the respect that you deserve, even from the energy, even from the ethers, command it, command peace, command love in your life, embody it, be it, and then you'll see it. That makes mm -hmm. sense. It does. I love that. That is so beautiful. Well said. Um, Patricia, I wanted to, I know a lot of people wanted to know what was going on with Canada. Um, like you said, with everything that's coming out, um, with the, the schools yeah. and like the, the, I mean, that was, so I mean, I, mean, I kind of knew, I mean, I did, you know, I did, I mean, it wasn't a surprise, but it just, the thing is, I, it's just, you know, I feel like the more people are aware of what's going on, the truth, you know, it really, really just really, I don't know what to say about it. It just really, oh, I really broke my heart to see that of what happened in Canada with the children being found the remains. And that just broke my heart. You know, and there needs to be, and I was just saying this to my girlfriend, if this was in the States, you guys would all be writing until there was action. The man who's in charge of our country, it's his father that allowed this. His father served for, I believe it was 15 years at the height of the residential schools and what was happening. And I just, I'm getting goosebumps even just thinking about it because any monuments, anything with that man's name on it should be pulled down because he allowed it. He allowed the church to operate in such a way because death certificates are signed by the government. Why was there never any investigations? And they're up to, I was, I was talking to um, my indigenous friend last night. She said they're already up to 495 bodies. And it's just, yeah. gonna keep going. it's just going to keep going and going. So we need to demand justice for what has been done to these people. It is sick. It makes me honestly ashamed to be white in this day and age. So all we can do is stand behind our brothers and sisters and say, this ain't right. This needs to change. Yeah. Our, our prime minister, he doesn't have an apology. Are you kidding me? That's yeah. a family. It's in his family. His father allowed this, allowed it. And now he's continuing and not accepting responsibility, not making a public apology to the people that the government and the church destroyed and the families and the threats and the murders and the beatings. You're not going to apologize for what your daddy did. That's sick. He should yeah. be off his throne. He really does. It just, I'm covered in goosebumps. I'm like, and the sad thing is, is Canadians, what are we doing? What Canadian guys, what are we doing about this? We need to be on the phones to our MLA. I've already written three letters and I got to tell you, so on my way to BC, um, in Bragg Creek, uh, it's, it, it's right on, it borders on Sutina, um, one of the reserves here. And they have rows and rows and rows of teddy bears tied to the, the fence posts. And I cannot explain how that sight affects me. It, it, we literally pulled over and said prayers because I know that each of those teddy bears represent the soul of a child that was murdered. Yeah. So for me, it was pulling over, opening the gates and saying, Lord, protect the children protect the voiceless. We need to be the difference. This kind of, of disgusting cultural divide 
it has to stop. It has to stop. And like, I gotta tell you, I've worked on a few missing person cases out in Siksika, which is a reserve 45 minutes from my city. And they have no clean drinking water. You should see what they're showering with. It is rust water coming out of their sinks, out of their taps. And it's, it's like, but you don't even know it's right there unless you're going there for something. You know what I mean? You just keep driving and you don't know what's actually happening there. Yeah. So I pray to God that we have finally had enough that, that we can no longer accept this and accept the divide. You know, it's the same thing between the vaccinated and the unvaccinated. Who cares? Each person has their own reason for making the choice that they did. We yes, I believe shame. in that. Yeah. We cannot mm -hmm. shame people or say, ooh, I'll give you a piece of candy if you come take my drug. Are you kidding me? What they're yeah. doing under the age of 12. If someone puts something like that inside of my baby without my permission, oh my God. Less, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, that's that's physical rape. It's putting something inside of a child that can't understand the choices that they're making so we need to start questioning this government that that is acting the way they're acting and i don't care about what side of the fence you're on vaccinated or not it's not about that it's about the divide that is literally happening before our very eyes and we're tolerating it yeah. where are our boundaries when is enough enough Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. I absolutely agree with that. Yeah, I mean, it's I'm ashamed. I told, like, so that's what I'm doing today for over a year and a half fighting for the children. And, and that's what got me really, really fighting for them, you know, because I wanted my when I look at my nieces, I want their future and generation, you know, to be much better. And then, like I said, I started because of the children and what was going on. And I was literally fighting for them. And I would give my own life for them just, you know, for them to be protected, you know, um, but yeah, no, I, I absolutely 100% agree. I'm pretty sure we all agree with that, you know, and I do hope, you know, the Canadians, I know I have a lot of friends who are born there, or raised there. And like I said, I hope that, you know, they're, they fight this, you know, I, and, and to hear that the Pope has nothing to say either. Are yeah. you kidding me here, people? <laughs> I'm just, yeah. I'm so disgusted between the government and that church. Like, I just, my, it's something you see on TV. You don't expect it to be in your own backyard. Own country. Like, yeah. We got to rise. We need a movement. We need a move. We do. We need a movement to say no more, no more just because of my skin color. No, no more, no more no person should have more based on skin color race anything like that we should all have equal opportunities and i think that that's why we're all here to affect change right? yeah no i believe it no i feel the energies i know i mean i've been feeling like very calm and grounded um but the only thing is that i have personal stuff going on with my family and everything but after you know with other stuff going on i mean i just like i said i guess because where i'm coming from um i'm spiritually growing and vibrating like i i put myself in a much higher vibration i don't put myself with the 3d or what's going on and everything you know um so like i said i'm just a voice that i try to help you know wake up the masses and do whatever i can for people to understand you know but i know like we can manifest you know the future is not set in stone everybody gotta realize whatever we can change that we can change by people you know we don't need a savior we don't need people it's really about the people at age of aquarius you know really it's about independence and not relying on government leaders politicians it's really about you making that difference and that's what they're really trying to make us feel like we don't need people to do things for us you know we need to take actions for ourselves you know and I just really hope that one day people can understand, hey, you know, you could do something, even though if it's small, help your neighbors, help your community, go to the grocery store for your, you know, for an elder or, you know, check on, you know, just do whatever you can, even though it's not a lot, you know, everything counts, everything, everything counts to bring some kind of change. Absolutely. Yeah. So Exude. That's the only way to change the world is by changing ourselves. We need to mm -hmm. affect change within ourselves. 
right? And and just remember, no matter where someone else is at, we have no right to shame them or to question a person even about their choices. Each person is is living according to their best life. So we yeah. need to respect that and 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 go within for our own answers, right? Yeah. No, it's really astounding. Um, the people I see, it's like I, a lot of people have realized of what's going on. I meet so many people every day because I work in a hospitality area and yeah. people know, they understand that something's not right. Like they're getting it. They're like something is, I mean, there's something wrong. You know, yeah. they don't trust the government. They don't trust, you know, like the vaccine. They don't, there's something, they feel it, they sense it. And it's like, they're waking up to something is definitely not normal, not right. And I was loving that, like I was having these massive conversation with people. And the sad part is people know the truth, but they, it, what hurt me was like, yeah, people might know the election was stolen, but they don't care. Some people said, well, I don't really care. It's better than, you know, um, you know, Trump or Biden, but they're like, oh, I don't care if it was stolen, you know, and that really was like, you gotta be kidding me. It's not about what side you're on. It's about the future of USA yeah. elections and protecting that in every country, yes. you know? 100%. And I was like, you guys don't, right. aren't getting it. It's, it's the, you know, it's, it's the, it's something that, you know, you know, I don't know. It just really for people to say that, like, oh, we don't care, you know, as long as Trump was out of the election, even if they cheated, you know, so what, you know? But I was like, even if it was the other way around, I would be doing the same thing, you know, same thing for the other party fighting, you know? But I'm just saying that, it, it's scary because I was like, well, what about our future elections? Yes. You know, it, it, it's, it's scary for people to say that or even think that. <laughs> well, it's allowing, it's allowing the 1% of the population to decide for the rest of the billions of, of humanity, right? It's not yeah. right. We are sovereign beings. We should be able to choose what's right for ourselves. Yeah. Right? Because that's going to look different for each and every one of us. Um, and people should be very concerned about the current narrative and where it's going and, yeah. um, you know, the right to question someone based on their healthcare status, I don't believe is, is correct. You know, that's yeah. private information and, um, and it goes both ways. Right. So yeah. no, some people in my city, you know, when I was going to target and I was living life, I was the only one without a mask and this other woman. And I think they're like, Oh my God, thank you so much for not wearing your mask. And she was Numbers. young as well. And yeah. she was, you know, she was happy. She was actually, we were both happy because we saw each other not wearing masks and right. we both felt so isolated and people were so terrified of us going near us. This one person saw me coming, literally had to go to the opposite side to not be near me because I wow. wasn't wearing a mask. And I was like, well, you know, and then some people are like, oh, we should have the passports and, you know, if, so you know, if, what if people, you but know, this or it, that, you know, it was it just crazy. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make no. any sense because here's the thing if you've had it you have natural antibodies so you don't need the vaccine um and if you've had the vaccine well then you're vaccinated so you don't need to be scared right yeah that's what i was saying so, I was like i'm not gonna hurt it <laughs> it's like what what is going on like if we sit back and we yeah. actually look at the narrative you know on it honestly it's people got to start doing their homework and realizing that we're being fed a bunch of BS, but I know we got to be careful about what we're saying. Yeah, I <laughs> know. Don't worry. Any strikes on the <laughs> channel. Oh, I still love you, Patricia. I was like, I won't get in. Trust me. I said a lot of stuff. The only thing I got was shadow banned and uh -huh. losing my subscribers. When I'm on the naughty list, they literally will just hide my videos or they'll delete half mm -hmm. my su subscribers. It's just really funny. Isn't um, it easy to think of the control? It, yeah, it no, I was telling people all my videos were like a thousand views and, and then they send me a report and they're like, oh, you had almost half a million watch time and you have almost a hundred thousand, you know, um, you know, watch views. And I'm like, in my videos, it's showing the opposite each month when I get it, I'm like, okay, there's something going on here. <laughs> Obviously I'm totally. thinking they're definitely controlling my channel. So it's, I mean, I'm still going, I'm still here. It's not shut down. So I've been very lucky. I think it's really divine that's protecting me and keeping me here with my YouTube channel. There's a reason I feel. Well, and you know what? The, the people that are meant to vibe with your message um, mm -hmm. are going to find you no matter what. Where there's a will, there's always a way. Spirit always opens. Oh, yes.
So, well, Patricia, I know you have um, a class tonight. Would you like to say anything um, to close out the reading or anything about, you know, your website, any future um, things you're doing that you want people to know about, you know, and I'm also going to have your YouTube channel link on my description in the last interview we did together. Okay, so I have something. Okay, so if I send you a free link to um, to my class, would you come? It's on Zoom. So July 28th, I'm doing Quantum Psychic, Delving Deeper Inside of the Matrix. So back in, I think it was February it was, I did Quantum Psychic um, uh, going, going in or looking in something in, inside the Matrix. And I got to tell you, it was an amazing, amazing class where I go over absolutely everything. I go over um, how I, my background, how I do this, all the different methods that I tune in. And if you like working on missing person cases and stuff, the thing is, is that I would love to bounce ideas off of you. You know what I mean? So if you want, it's a, th it's a four part series. It's um, every Wednesday for, from seven to eight 30 mountain standard time. Come, come, I'll send you the link. Come learn because you never know. I might say something that triggers it within you. And you're like, oh my God, I never thought of that. Right. It's all tools. Mm -hmm. We can learn from each other because I, I love learning different methods and, and different ways to be able to tune in on a deeper level, because when you, you can tell when, when something is clear as a bell, you know what I mean? Or if it's coming in spotty and I've got mm -hmm. little, little different ways to be able to get out of that static and into clarity and be able to fine tune what's coming in. So I'd love it if you come. Yes, I will definitely spread that. I'll definitely send me the link and I'll definitely, oh. you know, share it and everything. Oh, I have a question. Um, so one of this remote, um, remote viewer um, that I am really good friends with, um, I hope one day you guys can meet. Um, but um, so this person, um, I call him Mr. J, um, challenged me. Um, so we did this little challenge on, we kind of, you know, remote viewed this horse race. It was the, oh, this horse race video I did, um, the bell, I think the bell something um, race that's, I, I don't know where it is, but so we both saw similar things, but another horse, well, he got two out of the three horse. I got one out of the three horse, but our number one horse was the same thing. Oh. So I'm like, okay, are these horse races prearranged? Cause that was the first, cause I've done predicted the NFL for my brother and he won a lot of money, didn't share it with me, but I predicted the exact score and, you know, for each team and everything. So I was like, okay, I never done horse races, yeah. but the interesting part, we both thought our number one choice would win. It was a very close race, but then I was like, okay, there's something off. Like, I don't know. Cause I was like, I don't like betting on races or anything. Cause I just have this feeling like sometimes it could be, you know, little something going on behind the scenes yeah. or <laughs> Oh, I get and it. I mean, it's so, it it. so it it is. It's it's pre-recorded in the matrix. We our books yeah. are written. It's kind of like a choose your own adventure. The book is yeah. written, but we get to choose where we want to learn our lessons, right? So mm -hmm. I actually predicted one of my clients winning the lottery right down to the day that she won. And I wrote down the two dates. I wrote down November 27th is the day you're gonna buy the ticket. And December 2nd is the day you're going to win. And sure, sure enough, 7 million bucks. She won 7 million bucks. So the thing is, is that when something is meant for you and yeah. it's written there, it doesn't matter where you are in life. It's going to hit you and, and you're going to get it. Right. And that's why we can remote view events into the future to see what the outcome will be. Yeah. There actually is a way if, if, when a person is really good at remote viewing um, and can, there are certain people that can remote view, um, that can remote view. Uh, how do I explain that without getting too complex? You can remote view numbers, but it's super hard. Yeah, that's what um, I was saying. I do, I do it in, I see my letters and numbers and colors. So I'll actually re remote view the, the colors, the winning colors, right? But there is a protocol that came from the Monroe Institute on how to win the lottery, how to be able to actually remote view the winning um, lottery numbers. So normally it's super, super hard to be able to, um, predict numbers or letters, right? Cause that's left brain logic yeah. when you're trying to use your right brain. So what you do is you assign 49 pictures 
that represent a number. So pictures that have to be all different. So 49 completely different numbers and pictures that represent the number. So then energetically, you embed the number into the picture, right? Mm-hmm. And then you're remote viewing the winning pictures, which is oh, way okay. Yeah, I was getting way that. So- for a remote viewer than trying to pick the winning numbers. Well, my issue was my psychic um, that was coming in predicted the winner of the of the horse, but my remote viewing <laughs> predicted this. So somehow I had some kind of. I think that's what happened because I was like, okay, maybe because when I'm in my mind, I was like, oh, this horse, I know it's going to win, but my viewing says this. So I had two different, it clashed by accident. I had an AOL. So which, one was, which one was the one that won? Well, I, well, in my head, when I psychically, I was like, oh, it's going to be, um, a, um, was it quality, something initial quality? Yes. Well, psychically, I knew that was going to be the winner, but my remote viewing said, rock, rock your world hot rod charlie and i was really nice the third one i don't know why i said it because i wanted to be nice because it was bourbonic (laughs) and i felt bad for that horse and i was like i'm gonna i'm I'm gonna play devil's advocate but two of my horse rock your world hot rod hot rod charlie were winning the race they both horses till the end and then initial quality was so behind towards the finish line it comes out of nowhere wins the race the reason why i didn't pick it because i knew it was going to be behind i didn't finish the remote viewing i think yeah yeah so yeah it was crazy did you bet on it uh no i didn't (laughs) i was trying to help people but one of my horse came in second place my third pick but the first two horses my two first pick were winning the race it was so close and then the one I would I thought was going to be so behind it would not make it, but psychically I knew it was going to win. And you know I and then my other psychic friend was like, why didn't you just say it? And I was like, I got scared or I just didn't have enough confidence. I don't know, you know. Yeah. I knew the answer, but I just ignored my psychic side and just went with the remote viewing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. I don't know if you ever have that too. That problem. Oh, totally, totally, yeah. totally. And, and you got to learn to be able to, you know, weed through the, the little pictures that come in to distract you. Yeah. Sometimes things are a lot clearer than others. It really depends on what, I don't know, frame of mind, energy, all of it that you're in when you're doing it. Yes. Patricia is the, is the expert here. <laughs> I had a friend. <laughs> oh, I was, I was the expert, had a but. With you and she was so, I mean, she said it was just a hundred percent. So scary, after. I mean, oh, she sorry. loves you. Huh? Who, was that? who was that? Um, it was one of my friend who had a psychic greeting with you, Kim. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, very cool. So it was good. Yeah, she that. loved it. She was like, uh-huh. it was hundred percent describing everything from. Ev- I mean, everything. Oh. So that's why Patricia is always booked. She's one of the best. <laughs> I haven't, like I said, from other people I heard, she's really, really good, guys. It'll be, you'll be lucky to get a reading if you have a chance with her. So, and I, I heard other people and you're, I mean, you know, solving almost 30 cases of missing cases. That is outstanding. That is truly amazing. Well, and I, I, I want, I just want the opportunity to be of service because even when it comes yeah. to missing person cases, I purposely do not charge for mm-hmm. a missing person case. I think it's awful to do to yeah. charge someone in their worst time of need. And the other thing too, I give a 100% money back guarantee on my readings. I do. Oh, that's and good. I can feel it. I can tell when it is clear and it's coming and I know it because I can see it. I can yeah. tell. And so, it, and I'm human. There are people that I can't read for whatever reason, you know, yeah. it's like, oh, I can't really see you. Where's your soul? Is it under the chair? I don't know how to read the book. <laughs> Um, yeah. you know, and, uh, and so I, I read book. I, I don't care if I spent two hours trying to get into them, trying to see into them. I don't charge a cent. If I can't see, why would you pay for something you don't get? And I honestly, I think that every psychic should do that because it's karma. What we're yeah. getting out there, we're getting, we're getting back in. So, and I would never want someone to walk away from my office going, that was a waste of time or she's full of crap, you know? Okay. So yeah, I always make sure that I, I, very, very few. I think I've given maybe three refunds in my whole career. Yeah, but it, it that's happens. pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> well, and and so, you being trained at Monroe Institute. That's I mean, <laughs> come on now, people. You're getting somebody who's very 
Aww. you know, very yeah. good. I know a lot of people wants to be trained at the Monroe Institute. They're right well, next to my area in Virginia. Oh, that's so rad. That's my dream. Yeah. I want I totally two hours want. away from me. That's so rad. Well, yeah. come and join in on my Zoom class, Quantum Quantum Psychic. And I mean, and hopefully I can show you a few things that maybe it'll spark something, you know, or I, oh, I definitely I'll definitely, definitely share the link. You'll definitely see me there. And I'll write it down my calendar like everyone else. Yeah, uh, Patricia, just send me the link and then I'll definitely advertise it on my channel and everything. I think it's a great opportunity. And I know a lot of people want to know more, you know, diving deeper, you know, so that is a great opportunity, you know, so definitely worth it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And it's only, it's only a hundred bucks for all four classes. I try to keep my classes cheap so everyone can afford them. But I'm going to send you a free link. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to send you a free link. <laughs> um, oh. But um, okay, guys, so again, you're going to see more of Patricia. She's a very busy woman, highly, you know, requested. So again, I'm truly blessed and honored to have her again on my YouTube channel. And I love her and I love her work. I'm a huge fan. Everybody knows that and she knows that again. And Patricia, thank you so much for coming in. I love you. I love your voice. I love what you stand for and what you fight for, you know, and thank you so much for just coming on and just giving, you know, just we can hearing your voice. And, you know, and just knowing about your input, you know, it's just beautiful. And thank you so much for fighting for Canada. <laughs> uh, we, we got some standing up. To I know. Do. I, I have we faith in you. Change. Go, girl. <laughs> and I feel just as honored to know you. Thank you so much. So oh, my much pleasure. Your your family you. here, your family on my channel. So you have my email. <laughs> we got work to do, sister. We got work to do. I know. So, okay, thank yeah. you guys so much. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you again, Patricia. Bye, guys. God bless.